Hey, everybody, welcome back to another Rethink podcast. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a little bit different because uh, we're sitting there just trying to figure out, hey, what are we going to talk about today? And then I threw out an idea, and then my son Jordan walked by the door and went, hey, come in here. You want me on a podcast? And so you don't really know where we're going with this. You know a little bit where yeah. we're going to, so yep. but usually you're asking me questions, yep. and then the wisdom just flows. flows. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, usually we, we start with where we are you know, in our like, health uh, journeys. Our, our health journeys, our workout yeah. journeys. Jordan, where? how are you? I've been uh, drinking some green supplements. Nice. Serious? Yeah. Yeah. They're delicious. Yeah, mount, mountain, mountain Spring. Uh, it's ladder. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Is it healthy? Yeah. I mean, it's got broccoli seed stuff in it. No. Disgusting. That sounds like licking the bottom yeah. of your lawnmower. And it just tastes like that in liquid form. You, you look healthier, though. Get down at Question, quick. was this your idea or Leah's? It was Vinny's. Vinny. Vinny Lopez? Vinny, Vinny Lopez? Vinny Lopez. Dang. The one and only. Are you, is, is he training you? No. You should let him. <laughs> what, the did stuff you see him on Instagram crazy. and he go, hey, drink this stuff? And you no, did? I was talking to him and he was like, well, hey. You're you, in a small group with him, right? Yeah, you need to. I was like, I need to do something. He goes, well, start with this. He always says you can't out-train your diet. That's dumb. I don't even know what that means. Like you can't eat crappy food and I'm just trying to be a little healthier. You're doing I'm, great. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it's all about, baby steps. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. I got yeah. I brought hamburger helper for lunch, so I'm not all the way there. Yeah, yet. is that what you had for Father's Day? Yeah. Nice. This is leftover. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you also have it for your birthday. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Burger macaroni. That's my favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, very few of our moms ever made something that great. It's right up there with hot pockets. Oh, I love hot, hot pockets. <laughs> my mom didn't make hamburger helper, but we had spaghetti a lot. We did too. Too much. I thought we were international. Turns out we're poor. Yeah, yeah. You're not Italian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a, we had spaghetti a lot. Yeah, and baked chicken with barbecue sauce on it. Oof. Sounds all right. Not every day. Not every day. No. Yeah, it gets old. Yeah. All right. So here, here's what I want to do with this. Okay. Yeah. Is so this past weekend was Father's Day. Thanks for the great message. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. Sitting by a mighty bison. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, remember when we went hunting? Yeah. Don't bring it up, man. First of all, you wore famo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fashion camo. Yeah, birds didn't see me coming. And Timberl <laughs> was, didn't matter. Yeah. The only, the only thing you almost shot was my dog. Yeah. Just keep yeah. on bringing it up. Perfect marksman, though. I, I missed the dog because I didn't want to hit the dog, you know, and I almost hit that bird. I, I promise I would have shot you. <laughs> yeah. I would have been sad if I would have shot Murphy. That would have been sad. But yeah. I didn't because I knew, hey, if I aim this perfectly, I'll miss Murphy <laughs> and I'll just clip that bird. But you didn't. You hit dirt beside Murphy. <laughs> yeah, the bird changed direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, if you want to go hunting with Cole, you might want to rethink it. <laughs> How's that? Um, hey, so this past week was Father's Day. And um, you know, so you're, you used to ask me questions, stuff like that. But so, so many times I'm like, I, I'm through the tough parts. I mean, our relationship, father, son, and and even the last couple of years, with you, you and your dad, yeah. uh, is like, it, it just changed. So it was like, I'm not really responsible for raising Jordan anymore yeah. or, or, I mean, I, I'm invested in young leaders and stuff like that and our relationship's different, but you know, we were talking in the last podcast or maybe a conversation somewhere around that is that the rate the world is changing right now. It's like, it's a different world today than it was a month ago. And it's definitely a different world than it was four months ago. And then it's definitely a different world than it was like two years ago, you know, all the, the major like things out there, you know, so we've had all the race stuff that we've had all the COVID stuff before that we had all the, all the, uh, the gender stuff. We had all the masculinity stuff. We've had all these things raising their hands and the world changes. Right. And so a lot of times I, I, I look around and I'm like, like I'll, I'll talk to parents sometimes and they'll talk about like their kid dealing with pornography. And I'm thinking to myself, if I would have had a smartphone oh, yeah. when I was 14, I I would be <laughs> what? blind, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in prison. Yeah. That's a inside joke yeah. there. You know, I mean, I, I would I yeah. just, I would sneak a JC catalog or a in you know, the underwear section or yeah. a National Geographic. Yeah, and life like that, I could live off that for whatever. <laughs> the idea of what like the world changing. <laughs> Sorry, that's we, had we had LimeWire. No. Did you use like downloading music sites and you could change the files? Just me, continue. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand, John C? What do you think? I know what LimeWire is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was for downloading music, but then you too, can also but... download other stuff and then change the file. So it's like, oh, I had like two copies of every Tupac song. One was a music song, one was not. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you wanted a song and it wasn't a song. It wasn't, at it wasn't all. a song. And then when you realize, you're like, oh, oh. Kind of like the time that you were looking for BB guns and you went to dicks.com and it was yeah. not, it was not that <laughs> story was, at that time. They I don't know that story. They did not have BB guns. Yeah. They, uh, don't no. make the joke. <laughs> you, wanted, uh-uh. you wanted to. Oh, no. Good job. That no. was good filter. I want to point out. Yeah, you took it down. You listened. My, That's great. My glass gun is AR-15 gone. Yeah. is gone because yeah. I'm sensitive and tender. Yeah. Good job. Right? Good job. It's right over there. It's right over there, but listen, it's not the video. It's not the video. Yeah. yeah. I was going to fill it with Skittles and shoot love like a yeah, Care Bear. As, oh, yeah, which would be great. I, I, I love Skittles. Purple Skittles. Purple Skittles. Oh. Yeah. It's a food group. Yeah. <laughs> it's right with grins. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I, I'm looking, I didn't have, I mean, I had stuff I had to deal with when my kids were young, but it seemed like the world's really, really different. So you're two young dads. Like, what, what is like the scariest mm. part right now about being a dad for you when you're seeing the world like your biblical worldview and then the direction of the world's going is like how what's your plan like like what's the scariest thing right now you got an 18 month old Mm -hmm. um uh you've got two five and seven Mm -hmm. (laughs) so good my grandkids yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. but i'm just anyway uh what is the scariest thing right now like when you like pray about like being a dad or think just sitting on your couch and looking at the world. What's the scariest, most intimidating thing right now about raising your kids in this world? I'll start and see where it goes. I don't, I don't have a complete answer for yet, but I think I'm still, it might be that I'm night. What I might, it might be that I'm naive. Um, but Booker's a year and a half, so I don't... I mean, he's not really talking. He says ball and dog, which is all you really need to say. Right. Yeah. Ball, like I'm balling? Or like- yeah, no, just ball. Ball, just ball. ball. Okay. everything's a ball. We went to the zoo for Father's Day on Friday last week, and there's live tigers, and he's like, ball, ball, pointing at the ball they play with. I'm like... You, you know, you tigers miss- have COVID. Yeah, we stay- there's glass. Okay. You're safe. Yeah. Costco has glass, so does the zoo. <laughs> um, That's science. Yeah, science, but... Yeah. I think for me, it's like I'm in a spot where it's like I think I have a lot more control than I might have later down the road. Oh, definitely. And so for me right now, my biggest fear is how much I'm going to screw them up. And it's like I know that's going to happen. I know that's bound to happen. But I look at everything going out in the world, and it's like if he has a solid base, a lot of that stuff will play itself out, and, and truth will you know, take hold. That base is built through what I do and through what Taylor does. And so for me right now is like whether I'm – in a good headspace or a bad headspace, whether I'm like super well rested or tired, when I'm tired, I, I instantly go to laziness. And so it's like, instead of really focusing on like, okay, my job is, is to build him up and strengthen him and, and do everything to, that I can do to set him up well for when he's out. Like you, you've set up Jordan. So it's like everything you did, the base that you built is what Jordan now operates out of. Where I'm at is like the scariest thing is I know where I can screw that up and where I can fall short and where I can set him up for the biggest amount of failure. And from there, everything else can take hold. I would say he doesn't operate off the base I handed him, but it was a starting point that he had, it's to, a build a, point. Yeah. had to build your own base on right, right, from there. Yeah. But he, you started on what, what I handed you. Right, right. right. And so my biggest fear is, is what am I handing him? Am I, am I handing him something that is well thought through and well focused and like pointing towards Jesus? Or am I operating out of this was the easiest way? So here we go. Does that include fashion sense? I He has a great fashion sense, mostly because I dress him, not because of Taylor's, you know, help. But he looks good. <laughs> He's got a ton of famo. He's ready to go hunting for sure. He's got Timberlands. Continue. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. I just try to protect my kids from cold. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, that's right out of the song. Uh, like the, what? The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> the Proverbs. It's somewhere in there, protect your kids from cold. Yeah. I had a... Um, I actually tried to train Jonah to whenever he saw Cole, it was to punch him right in the groin. Yeah. Jonah never really caught on. No. But. He tried though. It was a, it was like a good year or two. Yeah. I tried to get him yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I just stared at him. I wouldn't ever smile at him. And he was like, that guy's a jerk. I never came to him. It was great. Um for me, like everything with COVID and then all the all the, the racial tension started happening, but because of COVID, they were kind of uh forcefully sheltered. So like they don't watch the news, they don't have phones, they don't 
they started they understood like what coronavirus was kind of what it was um government ploy <laughs> i'm just kidding most <laughs> some um, uh, yeah so i explained that whole conspiracy to carter <laughs> and uh uh no he uh they'll ask questions of like uh they're they're just they're sort of scared of coronavirus you know and they're and then they're just cooped up in the house so they're going crazy and um with uh once the george floyd stuff happened um i hadn't like been going to work a lot for months um and then all of a sudden i was getting involved in stuff downtown and um so they were asking like where are you going and i was just trying to explain to them trying to be um just going going down to serve people and help people and they kind of understood but the big picture they don't really understand right now um they're asking questions but like i think what i'm trying to tackle with my kids especially jonah and carter the older two um it's just how to handle their emotions how to handle um or and just to present myself as a place that they can ask questions and talk to um so that when issues arise down the road they're not afraid to come to me about it um so i don't have to like set up a curriculum to teach them about every biblical worldview right now it's just when those arise uh, we'll be communicating um and i'm not perfect at that uh and there's not a bunch of heavy questions yet but whenever like the seven and five year old Jonah and Carter, they, they they've been cooped up together so long, and they are just fighting about everything right now. Um, so we're trying to just work through that right now, um, and understand and listen and um, empathize with them when there's a conflict going on. Um, just try to get them not to just kill each other, but yeah. um, that's the goal. Trying to show them through that that. Uh, we're there with them. We're not just there to punish them or yell at them when they hit each other or something. We're trying to um, become that place where they feel safe to talk to about the issues that are going on in their life. So that would then set us up for the future when um, they're facing issues at school or yeah. um, through culture and stuff. So, uh, Cole, you said you're trying to prepare a base, mm -hmm. you know, f so that you can play off that. And that's what you're talking about is, so you, you're trying to create a base of open communication? Yeah. Because if you say, hey, we're going to talk about this, um, two months from now there's another thing, there's another thing that you can't pre-educate yeah. them for. But right. you can get a base going, my boys talk to me about uh, 99 things that are not important, but the muscle memory is I go to dad and we have conversations. Yeah. So that when a, a, like a, a, a pandemic comes up or a, or a, a, a racial question comes up, or a, a porn, like if right in middle school or whatever, when that is introduced to them inevitably at some point, they don't feel the shame that they can't come to their dad about it, and because I'm not going to just punish them, you know, I'm going to talk to them about it, and we're going to flesh it out and figure out everything that um, how to go about handling it. You said flesh it out. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I got myself there. But I know, you paused yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you paused and I just really can't let it go. <laughs> just can't let it go. Well, what's, what's the base? So that that's something to file away. Right? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, so what, what is, when you say base, what are you thinking? Um, Something along the same lines where it's like I look at how my parents raised me or like Taylor's looking at her, how her parents raised her. And there's a lot of good things that they did and then there's a lot of bad things that they did. And so we're trying to learn from both of those and like combine like best practices so that we set Booker up and whatever kids come down the road for that. And so when I say base, what I'm looking at is like, how do I create a home where Booker can be Booker? And it's like, when I think through everything that I've done in my life and, and when, when things really started going bad, it's like, I would do something and I'd come home and go, okay, I can't bring that home. I can't let my parents know that. Like, I can't let my dad know that or my mom know that. I, I, I created, and, and part of it was, was what they did, but part of it was my own self of like, I need to create, like we talked about in the last episode, like I need to create safety and structure and like protect myself. Mm. And I'm making bad choices out here. When I go home, I need to protect myself so I don't get in trouble there. Mm. And I can keep doing this out here. So what Taylor and I have talked through a lot is how do we create a place for Booker along the same lines of what, what George was talking about of like to come home and, and be at home and to be present and to be like open and honest. 
And like, we want to create a home where it's like, you can speak the truth without fallout. Like, that's our goal. Like, we want to be able to tell the truth in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And if Booker can, can tell the truth in everything that he does and not have fallout from it, but if he met with grace, doesn't mean he's not met with punishment without punishment. Or correction. Or correction. Right, discipline, yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's met with like, thanks for telling the truth. That's what we want. And so if we can create a, a foundation and a base where he feels like comfortable enough to bring the hardest stuff there, I've set him up best. I think through a lot of the things that like my dad did and like a lot of the like, like when I got caught looking at porn for the first time out of the hundred times that I got caught, right? My dad made a comment. I, I still remember. You're the very, kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like she got caught in different ways. Yeah. Uh, LimeWire didn't work? LimeWire? Yeah, we won't go into it. Uh, <laughs> but my dad made a comment the very first time of like, hey, that's one of God's daughters. And at the time, I'm like, that doesn't do anything for me. That doesn't make sense. I understand that now. But at the time, it's like, okay, cool. Like, I don't know what that means. And so then it's like, okay, all I know now is I just got in trouble for something. I don't understand why it's a problem. So now I'm going to hide it. So you just try to figure out how not to get caught, not how to correct it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I was looking for, like all middle school kids are looking for something when they go to that type of thing. And it's like, I was met with like, hey, that's wrong. I don't understand why that's wrong. I just know it's wrong. So I need to hide it. And then it came into hiding every other aspect of my life down the road is it's like, I don't understand why this is wrong, but I, I can't bring it home. So I need to, I need to hide it. Okay. So... That spurred a question. So riskier for you, but I think that we've talked about most everything that I'm going to bring up, okay? So it was Father's Day this past week, all right? So what is what is one thing that you saw in how your father treated you, me, all right, uh, all right or, um, or Doc, that you go, hey, I want to make sure that I do that with my kids. And then what's something, and this is the risky part, is like, hey, and again, I think we've talked through most of this, but like, what's thing going, it wasn't in my house, but I want to make sure it's growing up, but, but I want to make sure it's in my house here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so, cause we, all right. So relationships built through shared experiences and those, some of those are good and some are bad, but something's building, right? And sometimes you look and go on, well, I know I want to do better here than what I grew up with. Right. And I had the same thing. I wanted to do better with my kids that, than I saw in my parents. And I'm not slamming my parents, you know, and I pulled some of it off and some of it I, I didn't, you know. So what comes to mind on something going, let's go start with the, let's start with the, the negative one first. Then we can end on a happier note, all right, right? What's something going, it wasn't really present in my house. I'm trying to make sure it's more present with, in my marriage or my, my, with my kids. Just pick one or two. <laughs> like this, there's a list. I'll, you know? I'll go while you think. Um, and this will also play into the positive thing. But my dad, <clears throat> my dad had a hard time connecting with us when we had different like likes and desires. So my dad wasn't athletic. My dad didn't know anything about sports at all. Uh, we'd watch Bronco games and he would just like try to piss me off with his comments. And it was like, we'd watch the Broncos playing the, the Chargers. And he'd be like, oh, South Dakota's got a good team this year. And it's like, no. Or like they would, they would yeah, oh, trickster. Or he'd drop the, like the, somebody would drop the ball and be like, oh, he's got a case of the dropsies. And it's like, <laughs> shut up. Um, <laughs> I can hear him saying yeah. it. Uh, but growing up, it's like I played baseball. And it's like I played baseball through college. And my dad, the last time my dad played catch with me, I was in third grade. And it's not because he didn't want to. At the time, that's what I thought. But my dad was unathletic, and, and by the time I hit third grade, I had surpassed his athletic ability. And so playing catch with me was a thing where it's like he didn't do it, not because he didn't want to, but because he didn't want to look weak. Mm. And I think his dad's a lot of times, or husbands or men or whatever, it's like we go, I, I can't, we talked about this before, I don't want to look weak. I'll mm. do anything I can to not look weak. And so it's like my dad paid for me to do whatever I needed to do baseball. I played baseball year-round. Um but I can still remember the last time that we played, like I can picture it right now, like in the backyard playing catch, I had this blue and red glove. And it's like, I remember playing that and he made comments of like, wow, you throw so hard. And it's like growing up now, it's like I have the worst throwing mechanics in the world. Like I don't throw hard now, but back then it's like I had surpassed what he could do. And we had conversations about that, you know, four years ago. Um, but my dad didn't want to look weak and in doing so had sacrificed um, time with me. And again, I could have been the, you know, middle school kid that was like, I'm going to go spend time with my dad instead of doing what I want to do. But I was like, no, I want to play baseball. I'm good at baseball. I, I get worth from baseball. I'm going to go do that. And so looking back on it now, it's like, oh, that's time that I missed with my dad. But 
I don't think that's what it was at all. I think my dad was trying to protect himself and to protect me. Um, and so... How do you correct that, bringing it into your relationship Bringing it into my relationship with Booker is like, I want to keep in front of me that I am strong and that there's going to be a lot of things that Booker likes that I'm not good at. There's going to be a lot of things that I don't understand, but I want to try to take the time to get to know them and to be a part of them so that... I mean, my dad came to every weekend baseball game that I had my entire life like it wasn't a lack of trying mm. but i'd go over for over five and have two errors and get in the car and he'd be like hey good game it's like you weren't watching <laughs> you know so but you so you read you read some things yeah, yeah. Not, you took on a message that's not really true yeah but you read it as, absolutely you don't want to be with me you're not paying yeah. attention and, and, and i know now for a fact that that's not true <laughs> yeah right but so much of my life was spent like doing a bunch of stuff that my dad couldn't be a part of mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is create a space where it's like, I'm going to acknowledge the fact where I am weak and I'm going to try to lean into it and leverage the fact that if Booker is anything like me, he's going to want his dad in his life. And so I want to do anything I can to, to make sure that he doesn't have that same message. My dad was a really good dad yeah. and did a lot of things that I took messages out of that wasn't his intention. We all do that. Mm -hmm. But I know now where, where that was for me. And so now I'm going to do what I can to correct that so that my weak, my idea of what weakness is doesn't overtake time spent with Booker. All right. Jordan. Repeat the question. Yeah. So, what? So, we're looking at positive. <laughs> Something you did. Bad. So, no. No. It's like it's going. Okay. I want to do better in my home than what happened in the home I was growing up in. Mm -hmm. My dad. My. I, we always talk about because my first response when you start saying, "Hey, this happened," it's re I'm sorry, Jordan. I, how can I be? Here? And you're like, Dad, you did the best you could. Okay. Mm -hmm. But looking back at the way I raised you, and you know, you're raising three kids. What was something that was like? I want to do better in my home than maybe, all right? Because you're building off of what was handed to you, that platform, right? Mm -hmm. So what is one thing that you go, I want to do better? You know, understanding our dads did his best. I did the best I could, or imperfectly. Mm -hmm. But what is one thing that in, in your house, you're going, as a dad, I want to, I want to maybe, maybe try to do a little bit better. And so he wants to, like, make sure that he's interested in Booker's stuff so that Booker doesn't misread it, mm -hmm. all right, uh, his intention or interest in him. What, what's one for you? I guess just uh, it's, it's, it's weird because you're right there. You mean get on the table? This <laughs> <No. laughs> um, is a new one we haven't talked about. No, I mean I don't. I just it's hard to think when you're looking at me. Mm. How are you, John C? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good. good. No, I mean away, you're not a dad yet. No, nope, not yet. <laughs> Um, I'd say that it would be probably like just having upfront conversations about stuff, you know, um, growing up, I, you were like a youth pastor. So you had all these older kids than me that you would teach and stuff. And I would, I would learn stuff from, from that. Uh, I always felt like I was at a more mature level at least spiritually and then and just maturity wise joke like understanding jokes and stuff and yeah, sure. people that were around me just because I grew like I was a second grader hanging out with high schoolers you know um but I feel like that is kind of the main way I learned things from you was through mm -hmm. how you talk to how you would teach everybody I think that's probably common for most pastors' kids. Um, so I just want, like, I'd want to be more intentional with taking Jonah aside and teaching him something. Maybe I've taught it before, but just being like, "Hey, this is this 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 sermon's for you and you alone, or whatever." Mm -hmm. um, and 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 not just kind of letting what I've said in general cover that you know yeah. i, I want to make sure that they know that they are being intentionally taught and trained up and stuff by me so that's good <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> yeah no, that makes sense i you know i look back at my dad it's like like we had the talk it was like three 30 <laughs> seconds long and it was like ah, ah, ah right <laughs> but then you know he, he used to like teach sex ed like you used to have pastors come into schools to kind of give the spiritual view. Yeah. Right? He used to do that. And ours was just this whole, like, I, 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 right? Don't do it. Yeah, so I could go talk to high school students about the deepest things ever. 
and you learn by overhearing as opposed to. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's the example I was thinking of is you wrote, you wrote a book called what's the big deal about sex, you know, and that was for high school students. Um, but I don't ever remember, like, uh, maybe you do, because it's probably maybe super awkward. So but I don't have a memory of sitting down and having a talk. Yeah, you're right. Um, so I think I gave you a book. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so that's like an example. Yeah, that's good. But and now that I've written a book about how to be a husband and father, I want to make sure that I'm living that out and teaching my sons how to do that, not just be like. Well, they I, they know I wrote a book about it, so it should be good. So that's good. A little pup from a book there. <laughs> Man, Man on, on the throne. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Uh, you said your dad. You had a good dad. Yeah. What's something going? I want to. I want to do something similar to that. Um. There's a lot. My dad sacrificed really well. Um. My dad worked his ass off. He made a lot of money, but it wasn't for like his own value or his own like look at how much money I have it we were always taught about money like hey money is to take care of your family and then take care of your friends so it's like take care of your family have fun with your family and then whatever's left over take care of your friends but my dad would work his ass off all week and then come home and be present at home and it was like he always came home and it was like we said hi whatever and then he'd go and change clothes from work clothes into like relaxing clothes and it's like he needed 10 minutes to decompress and it was like he came out and it was like nothing at work was going wrong. Nothing in his life was going wrong outside of it. It was just like, no, I'm here for you now. And so what I want to do is is sacrifice for Booker and for Taylor and for whatever else that looks like down the road. Um, Jeremy. Jeremy. That's a good name. I'll tell Taylor you like that one. <laughs> uh, uh, Doc always was present. And so it was like it's it's a weird mixture of like, when he came home, he was always focused on us. Like we'd eat dinner, we'd go to bed. He would always brush our teeth when we were younger. And then he's a dentist. He's a dentist. <laughs> so it's like he he would always brush our teeth, and then we would lay in bed and read. And then he would just lay in bed, like next to us. And it's like he'd lay in bed in Carson's room first because he'd fall asleep first, then Clay's, then mine. And it was like we never missed that. And for my mom, it was like she got a break then because she'd been with us all day and was like, I'll kill them. So she was downstairs watching TV. But it's like bedtime was always my dad's thing. And it was like, no matter how hard work was, no matter how drained he was, it was like he was always present in that moment for bedtime. And it's like, I want to I wanna do that. I want to sacrifice in everything I do outside of our home so that when I come home, home life is as best as it can be and I can be as present as possible and be in Booker's life and Taylor's life uh, in a present way that it's like, I want, my kid, I, want, I want my kids to look back on that and go, that was my dad's and I remember that time with him. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Do it up. Um, Come on, land the plane. Yeah, this so, one. There's so many. I can't pick one. <laughs> um, the thing I really appreciated growing up was kind of the flip side of what I was just talking about. I had all these experiences where I got to see you teach or I just you'd be at church and I would just be there running all over the church or you'd go on a – every spring break we went on a trip with all the high schoolers and – Got to go to Florida every year, got to go on mission trips, got to go on uh, just tons of things. And I would just, I, that was, I loved doing those things. I loved those experiences. I loved experiencing other cultures. Um, I was in the bush of Africa as a fifth grader, you know, like that. Not White many, Maasai, that's what they called you. Yeah. <laughs> not many kids got that opportunity. Um, and I want to give my kids opportunities like that and experiences. Um just outside of what they would normally experience as Jonah's going into second grade. So like what, what experience can I give him during a second grade year that most second graders don't get? And maybe it's not go to Africa, but maybe it's, he comes and runs around the church a bunch, you know, or, or shoots targets in shoots the mountains. Targets in the mountains or pans for gold. We're going to find a lot of gold. We're getting into panning, panning gold. Have you done it? I haven't done it. I believe in you, though. I think it'll be really great. We got, oh, we got yeah. a creep, got a pan, got YouTube. Yep, you're set. <laughs> Rich. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to give them experiences. I felt like I had a lot of good experiences as a kid. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was, always felt I always felt important to you when I was involved in those experiences. You know, even though 
you know, okay, at, at, after dinner, there's a session that you have to preach to a thousand kids or something. Um, between sessions and stuff, I was right by your side, yeah. running around, jumping off cliffs, tackling impalas, whatever, you know? <laughs> um, and it was just, I just felt like that was that intentional time. And so even in the midst of your job, you included me even in your career and your job. And uh, I want to do that with Jonah and Carter and Eden. Um, just to give them those cool experiences. Awesome. All right. We'll check back with you in 10 years and see how you did. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, thanks for joining us.